Good morning, ladies. How are you today? We're terrific. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you. I'm very happy because Toronto is finally getting some nice weather, so oh, I can't okay. complain. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, congratulations. Sparky in the shot. Can everybody yeah. see Sparky? Yes, I understand that Sparky is there. And, and well, just, you know, let's start with uh, Sparky the star because Sparky is seen on every page of this book. Right, exactly. How did you know that? Because I looked through the book. Hey, aren't you good? <laughs> yeah, you really have to tell people because the book is about lambs. Yes. But, you know, lambs need a dog to help keep them in line. So Sparky, I mean, of course. I mean, Sparky's every lamb a needs a dog. There's right. no question about it. Okay, well, Anne, let, let's just start with you and let's talk about this adorable book because Lamb Slide is so, so cute. I wish my kids were little again so that I could give them, but I do have somebody to give my copy to, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. Oh, but yeah. I have to ask you, listen, you, you're, you, you've you given us so many amazing novels, from books for adults. This is your first foray into the children's lit. So first off, I just want you to give us a little synopsis about what Lamb Slide is about. And I want to know what, quote unquote, sparked the idea. <laughs> sure. OK, so Nicolette Farmer lives on the farm with her farmer family, and she decides to run for class president. And her mother says, you're going to win by a landslide. And the lambs are standing around and they misunderstand and they think she says you're going to win by a lamb slide. So immediately they want to know where the lamb slide is. There isn't one. How can we get a lamb slide? You have to go and talk to the other animals on the farm. The lambs go around. They find out what the other animals' concerns and needs are. And then they have a vote. And it turns out that the lamb slide wins by a landslide. And that's pretty much the story. And the inspiration was when Connor Lamb won the 17th Congressional District in Pennsylvania. Someone was holding up a piece of poster board at a rally that said lamb slide. And I saw the picture in the New York Times. I looked at my husband. I said, I got to go upstairs and write a children's book. <laughs> because I figured everybody was going to be writing a book called Lamb Slide. Then I sent it to my, my pal, Robin Price Glasser, the genius illustrator, and we got to work. But I have to say that Lamb Slide was about the fifth of a series of stories. And here's the story. Anne co-owns a bookstore in Nashville, Tennessee called Parnassus, a fabulous independent bookstore. And I was coming off a 15-year uh, stint. I, I, I worked on 80 books in the Fancy Nancy series. I was on the, the I was doing the very last book tour of 15 years of that. I walked into Parnassus where I had been for seven years in a row and had never been there. She happened to be there that day, and I fell <laughs> madly in love. I it fell was, madly in love. It was just well, uh, this kind of it, chemistry, it, chemistry moment thing. Exactly and meant to be. We were just blabbing and talking all over each other, and <laughs> I had the nerve. Here's this famous novelist who you just don't feel. Because yeah. I'd, I'd always adored her. Yes, I'm super intimidating. I'm so scary. <laughs> <laughs> and she's so not, and I was shocked yeah. by that. And so I had the nerve to ask her. I've never done this before. And I said, did you ever think of doing a picture book, children's books? And she said, no. But she had this idea, and she told us throughout the idea. I laughed hysterically. I said, that should be a picture book. And she sent it to me the next day. And then it just opened this floodgate. And she just started pouring out picture books, one after the other. She wrote 10 stories. Three of them feature Sparky. And so, so I drew a bunch <laughs> of pictures of Sparky. And anyway, uh, HarperCollins picked up the series. Uh, and they chose, of the 10 stories, to do Lamb Slide first, even though it was like your fifth story. Yeah, I can't story. even remember. Yeah, in the yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So. No, it's a, it is a great, amazing. It is amazing, and I, and it's so obviously you two work so well together, and I yeah. can just hear from you know you talking together right now. But for, you know, and look, the, the, the very subdued in the background of this story. Obviously, it's a little bit you know the election is obviously a significant plot point. So are we starting voters young? Are we trying to get them to understand the process this young? Absolutely. It's never too early to start. And you know, when I was a kid, I thought that voting was second only to driving a car for the most amazing adult thing you could do. I love the idea that voting was private. 
I remember my grandparents used to say you are never allowed to ask anybody who they voted for. That's sacred and private, and you go into this private place and make your own close decision. The, close the, the curtain. curtain. Like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I totally loved it. So I, I actually think that kids have a very deep a creative, imaginary life around voting. I know that I did, so mm -hmm. it, it seems like a good thing to be talking about. But what Anne does so well, and naturally, because most uh, or new writers to picture books do not understand, is that you want to teach the children something in your story, but you do not want to be preachy. So you have to hide the, 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 the message very nicely inside some humor and fun and animals playing on a farm, and and just naturally somehow does this. So it's like you're putting the spinach under the pie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's a good way to put it. I want to know what books you you ladies loved growing when you were little kids. What children's book kind of resonated with you? And you want to start? Oh, okay. D so weirdly, you answered that in an interview, and you answered four of my top te 10 books. The weirdest one, The Lonely Doll yeah. by Dare Wright. Which, which is, I, you know, did anybody read The Lonely Doll after I 1969? I don't, I mean, mm. I, I, it's so strange. It's about, a, it's about a doll who's abandoned by her parents. And, and she's, then she gets hit at the end with the- She's taken in with, by bears. Rush. And yeah, and, and Father Bear beats her because <laughs> she gets into makeup. I yeah. loved it. It, it was, was just fabulous. Fabulous. It's And it's fabulous. photographs, black and white, dark little photographs. Yeah. No, big. It's a big book with yeah, a pink right. and gingham. Love that book. I yeah. can't believe that you mentioned that. Okay, one. and what about you? Well, What's your my favorite? favorite book actually was a YA book, um, Harriet the Spy. Oh. And I, I really thought that I was going to be a spy when I grew up. I thought that was absolutely, I, I started, uh, I have three sisters and I would. I started secret notebooks that I had to write in code so that they couldn't read all the nasty things I was writing about them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, I was a Nancy Drew girl, so anyway. Oh. But congratulations on uh, on this book. It's so wonderful. L kids are going to love it. And uh, just, you know, come to Toronto and visit us in person Sunday, ladies. Uh, we'll you. do it. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, okay. please buy okay. it. Have a, yeah, have a, have a, oh, it. It publishes tomorrow. It'll be in every yeah. uh, place that you can buy books. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have it here in Canada for sure. Best of luck to you. And uh, thank you for your time. You were wonderful Thank to speak you. with this Thank morning. You. Thank you.